So let's start talking about CQRS and event sourcing. It's quite a trending topic nowadays. I see uh, already a few talks and tutorials at PHPCon talking about uh, that, uh, that topics. Today, I'd like to introduce or reintroduce you this concept in order you to oh, it's working. Uh, in order to, be, to you understand uh, how uh, how it can be powerful, and we <coughs> see it, if it just buzzword of or it is a or if it has a real value uh, to use it. I will mainly focus on. Uh, two topics. Main one is how this will help me to maintain a better application more easily and how it can help to scale out your application. So let me present myself in a few words. Uh, I'm Mathieu Moke, uh, alias Matt Ketmo on GitHub and Twitter. I work for four years uh, at Blablacar. Uh, as a web developer and a web architect, so Blabaka, uh, 20 million users, uh, ride-sharing company. A quick note about starting. Uh, I'd like that these patterns are uh, mainly used for an application. And it could be overkill if you create a new, uh, your new to-do app uh, or very simple application. So it's silver bullet. Also, if you have a legacy application, try to to inspire it from those concepts. It's not a strict pattern, uh, but it gives a real uh, great idea. So the talks will focus on input and output. In your application, basically, you have always uh, two sides, a read and a write. For the read part, it this means mostly 90% uh, of your application. Uh, you want this to be flexible. You want this to be, uh, to be eventually consistent. Uh, and as the opposite, the 10% right in your application, you want to have a strong validation process. You want to have a strong uh, coherence uh, in order to not write in your database. I don't know if it's working well or not. So it's good. Do I keep going? Yeah. Let's continue. Um, so basically, both sides are different uh, aimed, but you want it to be fast and you want it to scale. For this talk, I will take a simple example. Uh, the concept, uh, the classic bank account example. So basically, <coughs> I'm a user, I have several accounts, and I want to do some transfer and open an account on it. Basically, when you start a new application, when you want to bootstrap something simply, you start with a classic ORM. So you have some model, some uh, controllers, some models in the ORM and your database. You generate entities from validation and so on. Yeah, there is code like this. So Sorry? Bring, bring the okay. Let's change, okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's working better? Yeah. Okay, so basically, when you bootstrap an application, you start with something like this. Uh, for example, using Doctrine RM, which is a very simple application, creating your account. You, all your relations, your, your fields, uh, you, you, it's not working as well. Uh, um, and finally, in the long term, you, you understand that this does not scale well anyway. There is no business logic, uh, isolated. Uh, so you start creating a service layer to, uh, to have this business logic of your application. So, for example, in my simple bank account application, I want to create, to open new accounts. I want to create it and make debit on it. And I want to get uh, all the accounts created previously. So let me introduce the first pattern. So CQS, it stands for Command Query Separation. 
So basically, this mean this means there is uh, for each operation you need to to decide either it's a command or it's a query. A command is something that changes the state of the system and does not return anything. And the opposite, a query does not change at all the system, but the, the only return data. So in other words, it's write only and read only. So with my previous example of bank account service, I have command, so I can open credit and debit uh, on the account, and I, get, and I can fetch data from the account, so get and find all. Here, we do not respect the rule, because because usually, when you start with ORM and classic MySQL or Trunkrement, you'd like to uh, return the last uh, insert ID, which is in this concept, 1212. Um, that's why we usually use uh, UID, so you can generate uh, ID before uh, saving the data. That means you're not dependent to your database anymore. You're focusing on your domain. You, are, you have all the key to, to build your domain without uh, needing a database right now. Now the CQRS, the CQRS um, pattern, it's quite the same, except it's even more separated. It's command and query responsibility segregation. It's segregated, segregated into separate classes. Basically, CQRS is um, is uh, we want to separate uh, all the workflow of the read and the write. That means there is no sharing between uh, model, application, database. So you can have different models for write and for read. And in the future, you may have different database for read and write, and even different. It it leads it help to uh, to get microservice more easily. This is what a model of CQRS will look, like, will look like. So basically, I have a command facade and a command handler who will get the command, uh, so the right operation from the user, using its own model and saving in one database. And we have different model and repository for the query. So we don't share one entity for read or write. So that's cool, but now what? How oh, it will help me to my, to have a better application, more maintainable, more scalable. So now that every side of the application, so read and write, are completely separated, it's way better to optimize it uh, each part separately. So for instance, every write, since I don't expect any data from, from my write uh, operation, I can do all the execution asynchronously. You may have heard of uh, RabbitMQ, Kafka, and so on. So it's typically that kind of technology you can use quite easily without any, uh, any monetary, some, uh, anything else in your application. So just, for example, uh, a, a user send its intention through a command, and I, j I just act. Okay, I've, I validated this command, and I will do it later. So for example, for uh, open account, to just create an open account command with my new generated ID. And if I do some validation on it, so user is allowed to open account, for example, uh, just I will handle this command synchronously or asynchronously. It will depend of, of your need, and I can easily uh, respond to, user, to the user uh, fastly. Another example with a debit. So I just create a new command, check in my controller if I have enough money on my uh, account, if I can do the debit, and if it's okay, just respond to the user, it's okay. So doing things asynchronously, natively, it's very easy to scale workers you can you can scale you can dispatch all the command to separate processes and use your favorite technology so RabbitMQ, Kafka, German, and uh, there is also many many uh, queue system you you may want to use. You can also do some command tracking so for logs for example a user 
create an account and you just give him back an ID and he can check via pull or via a push uh, if uh, when the account is really created. It's optional, but it will depend on your needs. If you need to do that, you can. So on the other side, so the red side, you can easily do project pro projections. So the, um, the goal is to, to prepare your data before you, the user requests it. So basically, having one read, one uh, data store for read and for write does not scale well, because for read you need some coherence of your database. So, for example, the ACID uh, property of uh, my, or MySQL or any SQL database, and for write and for read uh, you may want to uh, fast NoSQL uh, data store uh, engine. And also, you don't you want to avoid any join uh, because it's way faster. It's way uh, easier to, to share your data. So I think you, most of you may know uh, about Elasticsearch. Elastic, Elasticsearch is a fast uh, engine to, uh, to make a search uh, index. Uh, basically, we use it on uh, BlaBlaCar. For example, BlaBlaCar, so you post a trip, you want to go to from one city to another, and we save it in a MySQL store. But for our research page, we don't use MySQL at all. We only use the data stored in uh, Elasticsearch. That's kind of projection. Every data is denormalized, so I, have, I don't need to join my trip resource with a user resource. I have all the data in one document. And I just need to adapt the data I store according to the needs of my research. So the info I need to display on my research page. Let's take another example, GitHub, um, Twitter. Twitter, at the beginning, they have a MySQL technology. So it's probably something like this to display a timeline for a user. So select tweets and join with the user, and join with the followers, and so So it's a very huge query to execute. No, it supports uh, that, uh, that kind of, of query anymore they need to prepare the timeline before the user needs it. So basically, when a user posts a tweet, just store it in a primary database and do some aggregation, so dispatch the data uh, in each timeline. So for each, for each followers, you just duplicate your data, you denormalize it. So for example, the user ID, here I have the full name and the username and so on. So I have all the ID of all the information I want to display in the timeline of the user. So my query becomes very simple. Just select uh, in my timelines all the tweets. Another example, Google Analytics. You have an input page view. And in your dashboard, you have some nice, fancy uh, uh, graph. So a graph per month, per day, per hour. Only the one thing you need to do to display the, this, this graph is just increment some counters. So when you need to display it, it's just reading some uh, few of uh, integers. So basically, it's what the time series database do for you. But uh, you can do in your application even. Another example uh, taken from Blobacar. So we recently used Cassandra. I don't know if you know it, but Cassandra mainly, so it's a no SQL data store. And if you need to display data uh, from two different manner, uh, you will need to have two different indexes. So in Cassandra, it's named DSpace. And of course, yes, there is no join, uh, so you need to denormalize uh, your data. So we use it for messaging system. So basically, when a user posts a message to another user, we store it in a primary uh, database. And we dispatch this uh, this new message to uh, display uh, a new counter for uh, for the destinator message for the 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 sender for the recipient user. Uh, <coughs> we also update the index uh, where we display the list of messages on the user dashboard, and there is also another index to display the message on the user uh, trip page. So different needs, so different indexes. Also, this technology we choose to better shard our data and replicate 
it across the world because there is no join. It's very easy to uh, to shard and uh, duplicate your data across multiple data centers. So now that we present in uh, in uh, South America, in uh, Asia, and so on, we need to to easily replicate replicate so duplicate our data. So here is a first overview of the first part of the talk. So to summarize, uh, the user will send an intent through a command. So the command is validated before sending to the command handler. And the command handler will do the, the save of the data and dispatch it to other processes, which will do some projection and to display uh, the data to the user. So now let's go to the second part, so event sourcing. Event sourcing play well with CQRS. It will basically change the way you save your data. Usually you save a state of your data. For example, your bank, uh, bank account, you will store that there is uh, 10 uh, euros on it, then there is uh, 20 euros on it, and so on. And you lose the past event. And with event sourcing, all you need to store is only the event. So if we know the event of the past, we can easily reconstitute the present. For example, here if I put 10 euros on account, so then I store there is 10 euros, then I add 10 other euros, and I just store there is 20 euros on it. But with event sourcing, only, only the only thing you store is the event. So there is a two uh, two events with uh, 10 euros, so I can guess at this moment I have 20 euros. So that's what uh, an event store will look like. I just have the tip of uh, event, so first I open an account, then the account was credited. So I have the ID, here a new ID, that is generated by my application. And this ID is allow me to, to regroup all the events to, uh, to, to guess uh, everything that happened on the account and to, to guess the, the current amount of money. And there is also so a record on, uh, which means I can uh, get the event in the right order they, are, they have uh, happened. And also a payload, which is totally schemaless. Sometimes there is a payload, sometimes there is another payload. Sometimes there is no payload. It's just random data on your events, just, just serialized data. And basically, events is really the heart of an event sourcing system. Uh, if you attended Matthias' uh, talk uh, this morning, you will probably know about event sourcing and event storming. And in event storming, basically, the only thing you need to focus is your event. Just Start by creating your events on your system, and then uh, try to to get what process will lead to this event. But the, the, the really the one thing you need to focus is event. It's, a, it's your primary data. So aggregate and aggregate route are some object very useful in uh, DDD, which will uh, bring those events together. So for example, here I can have a bank account aggregate, and this aggregate will get the input, so the open and the credit uh, command, and will we'll, um, we'll, uh, create the event to store in the data store. So for example, this is my bank account aggregate. As you see, I just opened a new account with an ID, and I credit some money on it. So every logic is on in, his, in its model. So the role of the aggregate is to record events. So for each operation, I need to create events. So here is an example of aggregate root interface. So just get the events needed and the aggregate root ID, which is the ID to, to group all the events together. So basically, when I have this code, so just create, open a new account and credit some money on it, I should have two events uh, afterwards. So account was open and account was credited. 
And my model, my aggregate, rate is really simple at the end. So when I call the open, uh, the open method on it, just apply account was opened event. And when I create something, just create a new account was created event. Then, so you need to, you create some events and you need to reconstitute this model from the past events. So there is other method. So for each event, you, you trigger some operation. So for example, when I credit, I add some money on my uh, local, uh, local attributes. And when I debit, it's the opposite. I remove some money on it. It's a pretty simple example. Your aggregates will protect your business rule. So let's say you can't have a negative amount of money on your bank account. And it will never happen in your applications. And then just ensure it is on your aggregate. So for example, let's check that the amount of money uh, in your bank account is, is uh, superior than the, the debit. So this is not the validation used for your user uh, feedback. So you need some validation in your controller before. But that type of check will ensure the consistency of your database and uh, to ensure there is no, uh, no weird things in the, the, your primary data. So what does command, sourcing, command plus event sourcing uh, looks like? So again, a uh, user will create uh, his intention through an event. The command handler will create some events uh, from, um, from the, the aggregate and just save the aggregate, save the events aggregate in the, the event store. So this is an example of command handler. Pretty simple. So when I handle the open account command, just use my aggregate, the open method of uh, my aggregate, and save it into the repository. And for the credit, just load it uh, the previous event. Uh, so restore the, the bank account and just apply the credit method on it. So what does the save and the load method of the of the, um, the repository will looks like? Just get all the event uh, on the aggregate and just append it to the event store. And for the load, it's the opposite. So get all the uh, the event from the event store and recreate the aggregate from it. So there is cool things about event sourcing and less cool things. So the pros are it's an append-only database. So for write, it's super fast. There is no update of previous data. And, and if you want to delete something, so for example, close an account, it's, you don't delete data. It's just create a new, new event. So it's super fast. And the consequence is that it's immutable. So for example, if you have a business uh, process uh, outside of your app, you can easily replicate all your data. You know that it's always valid because it's immutable. There is absolutely no database migration. So for the, for the right part uh, only. So because it's happen only and immutable, so there is no need to, to migrate previous data. You can shard very easily those events because aggregates, there is no relation between aggregates. So you can, for example, have an event store only for bank accounts and for events from user or from another uh, aggregate, you can use different, uh, different data store. You always have the complete historical data. So that means when you, you think later, about um, a new process you want to integrate in your application or, or for your BI team or your marketing team, maybe they want some several data you, you may have lose previously. So here you can have the complete history data and you can recreate the view part uh, at any time. So now, what are the downside? You may ask, what happens if I do two concrete uh, updates. For example, I have an account with 
uh, and red euros on it. What happens if I have two process exactly in the same time that will load the aggregate from the event store? So we'll check there is uh, 20 euros on it, create the event on it, and and then write this new event in the data the store. So in this case, you need some logic, uh, something because uh, you don't want to have incoherent data. In the library I use here, uh, there is a special feed, played, which is a um, uh, custom auto-increment counter, uh, which means for each aggregate, for each ID, for, for each UID of an aggregate, you have another counter. And if you use, for example, a MySQL uh, data, data store, then you can uh, easily create a unique key with the ID of the, the gate and this counter. So you can't have, so if you have two process, two events in the same time, they will have the same uh, played ID, so the same uh, counter, and they can't be insert in the database. So now what happens if I have too many events? Because for example, in uh, my bank account, I have uh, it for long years, and I uh, do uh, several transactions in it. So do I have to read the full history each time I want to write something? Well, there is something called snapshot, which means temporary store. Yeah, I can uh, save the, the state of the aggregate, and then I don't need anymore to load the whole history. So for example, you can say um, every 10 events or every day or every whatever, you just create a snapshot and then when you load your aggregate, just start from the old snapshot and take only the, the last events. So I make a um, quick uh, summarize in a graph uh, of all the the process. So on the upside there is a write part. So this command uh, which creates uh, through aggregate some events and which applies some uh, strict business rule on it. Uh, command thing is for log. If you want to log command, you you can easily. Then those events are happened in a a, a main event store and they are dispatched through an event bus. And that event bus, so the technology of your choice, uh, for example, if you take Kafka, it's uh, really easy because Kafka will, uh, it's how Kafka works. It just opens some uh, messages on the, di on the disk. And then any workers or external processes can just listen to these events and just create data to display to the user, so the read model. Or they can do some uh, side effect process like uh, sending a mail or sending a notification and uh, recreating some uh, other uh, data used for uh, another system. So you can imagine every possibility is there. So there is a lot of framework, uh, especially if you come from uh, .NET and Java work and Java world. Uh, there is one famous called Axon. Uh, in PHP, the, the example I took comes from the Broadway, uh, fr uh, the Broadway library. Uh, I love it pretty well because it's quite simple. There is interface everywhere and you can uh, just create your own implementation if you are not satisfied with uh, the default one. Uh, so you can get it at GitHub, so candidate lab slash Broadway, and there is also a demo of uh, the use of uh, example of the, the library. Here is a quick FAQ and short uh, description of every uh, process in it and even more. I didn't explain everything uh, in a secure SP7 sourcing, in a secure SP7 sourcing uh, application, but you can quickly uh, read uh, that site, so secures.nu, which will explain quite uh, fastly and uh, briefly uh, all the, the concepts. There is a mailing list too, thanks to Matthias, who gives this talk uh, this morning. And uh, I'm here, so I hope you, you understand how it can be powerful, and uh, thank you.
So I put my, my slide on, uh, on my seat. So you can grab the, the slide if you want. And you can leave a feedback on Twitter or uh, on joining. Now if you have questions. So a small nerf to win if you have question, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> No question. Okay, so thank you. I'm here. I'm staying. If you if you want to to ask them uh, privately.